So I'll take you through the app and the, and the cloud uh, website. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, just please feel free to interrupt and ask. Okay? Okay. Uh, all right, so what do you see? Can you see my screen okay? Uh, yes. So what you see on the screen now is a live shot of my iPad mini. QTrack uh, works on any Apple mobile device. So iPod Touch, iPad mini, iPhone, iPad version uh, 3 and newer, uh, all are, are uh, acceptable. The newer generations have better cameras, so they scan quickly. So if you can do iPod Touch Gen 5 or uh, iPad mini, iPhone 5, 5 they, they all work well. 4S will work also. So uh, QTrack is a free app in the App Store that you can download uh, onto, onto any uh, Apple device. And uh, basically, we don't license it by user. We license it for the. We would license it for the whole uh, whole university, and you could have as many users on the system as you'd like. Which college is like simply because they have a lot of peak periods, like you said, mm -hmm. beginning of semester, lots of packages. It's always good to be able to throw some extra manpower at it without having to, you know, purchase another license or anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And like I said, you can stop and and, uh, and uh, ask questions anytime you'd like. All right. So on the app itself, you can see we have four functions. The first function is colleges love because if either whether you're out delivering faculty packages or students are coming to pick up, student comes to the uh, to the package room and says, "I have a package." And then, you know, what do you have to do? You have to run to the PC. You got to look up information. Right from the app in real time, you can type in the, uh, the student's name or box number. And it'll go to the database and, and look for packages for that student that are undelivered. And then once I get there, I can just tap on it and uh, it'll tell me everything I need to know about the package. You know, when it came in. Who, who routed it when it came in, who was from, who was to, any location information, and any notes that I made on the package. So it, QTrack gives you the ability to, to query the database mobily, which is something uh, all the other products on the market don't do. So then we come to our, our core functionality of receive, route, and deliver packages. Now, we say packages, but we can track anything, uh, whether it be assets, files, sign-in, sign-out desks. We have a couple schools that use it for their audio-visual uh, signing-out equipment, cameras, and such. So we can track anything. We keep a full chain of custody history of all, everything we track through QTrack. So and the other thing about receive, route, and deliver that's important is that each one of these functions stand alone. So most, P, most users don't use all three. They can, you know, we have some users that just use deliver. Most colleges use route and deliver. Some people use receive and deliver. It's all how uh, best QTrack fits into your process. So you don't have to use all three. You don't have to do them in order. You can just, uh, whatever works best for you. Okay. Okay? All right. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you all three just where you get an idea, and then you can, we can decide what works best for you, but it's probably going to be route and deliver. Well, receiving QTrack is a quick way to show possession. So if I want to record that I receive these items at this date and time and how many items I receive, uh, I can do that uh, using the receive function. And all our scanning views are the same. Now, QTrack, most users use the camera on the device to scan. We also have an external scanner that functions more like a laser scanner called the QTrack Pro that I can show you in a little bit. But here I'm just using my iPad mini. And we have two modes to scan in, carrier and custom. Carrier uh, mode only scans UPS, FedEx, and Postal Service tracking barcodes. 
So you never have to worry about scanning the wrong barcode. And it's quick and easy. I just point the camera at the, the barcode itself and I, it scans. So here I scan three packages. I hit done and it automatically uh, scan, recognizes it as UPS. If I hit receive, it'll send back to my cloud database real time that I received these three UPS packages with these tracking numbers at this date and time. So it's just a quick way to show possession. I can use the custom scanning feature to scan any type of barcode. So in custom, if I get office supply deliveries or anything like that, I can use the custom mode to scan. Okay? Okay. Route is probably what you're going to use because Route allows you not only to record that I received these packages at this date and time, it allows me to route and notify the recipient. And we have two types of routing. We have a group routing, which allows you to route multiple packages as a group. Like if you would get, if you were sending 15 boxes to the bookstore where you know only one person is going to sign for them. I could route them all as a group, and uh, or when I go to deliver them, all I have to do is scan one and get a signature, and everything will update automatically. But for student packages, most likely you're going to route them individually. So if I have a package for a student, I'm going to scan it, hit done, and route. And now I'm going to route it to a student. In this case, we'll make believe you're a student. And uh, here I have you in my, my database. I choose you, uh, I choose your name, and I could stop right here and route the package. Okay, so I keyed in a few letters of your last name or your box number, and I chose the, uh, I chose you from, from, from the list. Okay. I can stop right here if I want to capture other information like who the package is from. Again, this pulls from my database. I can capture it from Amazon. I can make notes on the package, like where I'm putting it. And the key thing with all these fields is one is I don't have to type in the full thing, so I save keystrokes. It, it records what I type most often. So I'm just saying I'm putting this in the storage room and I, it's perishable. The other important thing about these fields is that they're all searchable, okay? So if I want to go back and find out, you know, what's perishable in my, my storage room, I can, also, I can search that all via qtrack.net. The other cool thing I can do is take a photo of the item. So if I get a high value item, and I want to take a picture of it to record the condition it's in, I can do that also. And all of that's going to become part of the record. So the key with routing is I can capture as much information as I want or as little. It's totally up to you. Gotcha. And then once I route the package, a couple things happen. One, again, all that data is transferred to the cloud real time. I don't have to dock any device. I don't have to plug it into my PC. Everything is communicated real time. The other thing that's going to happen is you're going to get an email notification that you have a package that has instructions on how to pick it up. And that is to that email is totally customizable by you. Okay. So look for an, an email from info at qtrack.net. All right? Yeah. Any questions on routing? No, it's very simple. Okay. And you know, deliver, student comes, picks up the package. All I have to do is rescan it. And you can see there I got an error because it saw a barcode on the, the label that didn't is not a UPS, FedEx, or Postal Service barcode. So it shows here that I, I scanned one package successfully, and then there was another barcode that I didn't recognize. Again, you only you don't have to worry about scanning the wrong barcode. I hit done, and what it's going to do, it's going to tell me who this package is for. And uh, so I know I'm giving the right package to the right student. 
So I don't have to pre-label the package. I don't have to do anything to scan the barcode. The system will tell me that I'm giving the package to the right student. Now I have a couple of options. One is we have a, a, uh, a ID card reader where you can swipe a student ID card and it'll read in that that package was, was given to that student at that date and time, all right? Yeah. I could show an attempted delivery. If I go out and deliver packages and nobody's there to sign it, I can log an attempt that'll show that I tried to deliver this package, but, it, but I brought it back with me. And I could even key an email in the system to be sent out that, hey, I tried to deliver the package. The package is in the, back, back in the, uh, in the package room. Come pick it up. Okay. Or, I have a question. Yes. What if uh, I give them 15 days to come down and, and, and pick up the package? No matter right. what I do, I would, send, I would send a second notice and a third notice, and then I would send it back to sender. Right. Is there any way that I can just do that also? Yes. Yeah, I'll show you that in a second. Okay. Yeah, we have reminder emails too. So from here, if you know, if I if I'm, yeah, I can just swipe an ID card, or I can just get a signature right on a device. I like that. Hit done, and of course you can't read it, so you got to type in the last name. And once I type in something once, it'll automatically recognize it. All right, and now the package is delivered. And that's the app. Any questions on the app? I, I don't know. Okay, great. Mr. Johns, how about you? Looks good. Cool. So anyway, I'll show you now the website, which again is real, real simple to deal with. So after you log on to the website with your same user ID and password, it brings us to what we call our packages screen. On the packages screen, it, it, it shows you your most recent packages first and the status of all those packages. Uh, if I want to search by a particular, uh, by any information that I recorded when I routed or delivered the package, I can do that just by typing into the search bar. So if I'm looking uh, for packages for you, Edgar, and I want to type in just a part of your last name, it'll bring in all my packages. And there's the, uh, there's the, uh, the package I did today. So I delivered it today at 1.47 p.m. I, if somebody's requesting this information, if a parent's calling and says, did my, my, did my son ever get... Uh, Get, get his package. Yes, he signed for it at 147. Here, I can send you an email of that information just by typing in the email address right here. I can look at the complete package history of that item, everything that happened with it, just by going, looking here. So it was received by me at 1.41 p.m., then it was routed by me at 144. It was from Amazon to Edgar. Here are the notes I made. And then here's when it was delivered at 147 by me to Edgar. There's his signature. And there's the uh, there's my what I typed in. And if you notice, I I have routed, received, and delivered this package multiple times. And we keep track of every movement. And there's a photo I took of it also. So we keep the chain of custody movement of every item. The other thing I have, again, I talked about QTrack being unlimited users. So I could do all my own user management just by adding a user. And then I have roles. A supervisor can do anything. A scanner operator can receive, route, deliver, and search for packages. And then if I have departments on campus that I want to be, you know, that call me a lot for package status, I could set them up as searchers where they could search our database for their own information. They just can't change anything. Okay. 
Then we have what's called contacts. A contact in QTrack is anybody I deliver packages to or receive packages from. So you know, I can add a contact manually just by typing in the information. And the important thing are these three location fields. These location fields are what displays when I go to route a package, whether it be a box number, a department number, room number, whatever I, I use to identify that person on campus. Now, obviously, how many students does Mansfield have? 3,000. 3,000. 3,000. So, obviously, I'm not going to want to key in 3,000 names. I just need a CSV file of your students, and then I can uh, I can just import it into uh, right into QTrack. So here I'll just grab a CSV file, and here I'm just going to match up. Here are my fields in my CSV. Here are my fields in QTrack. I'm going to put first and last name into my full name field. I'm going to put email into email. Obviously, if I had a box number, I'd put that in our location fields. And then I can append the overwrite and just click up, upload, and I'm done. And on the reporting end, I could look at various types of data in terms of what's undelivered in my package room for this month. And it'll always show me the last, uh, the last uh, action on the item. And these items have been routed multiple times, as you can see. Uh, I could also look at how many UPS I've gotten this month. So different stuff I can look at there. I could also route via my PC. Here's where I, you know, if I want to, if I get something in and I want to print a barcoded label to track it, I can do it right from my PC. Just generate a barcode. Type the recipient. Let's put you in there twice, Edgar. Uh, and uh, you can uh, look at that that information and print a label and track that via the whole, you know, via your whole process. We also have users that just you do manual entries via the mobile device, tag it like if they get flowers in, and then process packages that way. Yeah. yeah, you can use print. A lot of universities use it to track print jobs too. Yeah. So. Every time we got call, we never got my my printing request. Yeah. Do you do, do your on your print jobs? Does your job ticket have a barcode on it already? The what? Does your in, when you get a print job and you get a you print out a job ticket for it? No, does, we just get like uh, they put like their name, you know, and okay. the invoice. Got it. Building. Right. So that's, a, you know, again, it could be used for that. And what makes QTrack so great is that uh, it's so simple to set up. So the only two things I have to set up are whether I'm printing labels and if I'm printing it from the web or the mobile app, or am I printing it from the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, or am I, if I'm sending uh, email notifications. So here's the initial email that I can customize that goes out when I route a package to somebody. So this is the email you got. I can also put a delay on this email. So if I'm processing packages, I don't want students running down to uh, to see, you know, to, to get their packages. I can delay that email from going out. And then you asked about reminders. So if a package goes unpicked up for a specific period of time, I could set reminders up where it'll send a reminder email out in, you know, by hour. And, and after the first, say, 48 hours, it'll send another reminder. 96 hours, it'll send another reminder. Okay? Sweet. And that's it. Wow. That's uh, very nice, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a real...